here talking about OWASP blockchain, um, especially for PHP developers. Okay, it's just the same thing that if you are, I was talking about this on another language, with the difference that this is, the sample code are written in PHP. Okay, and about myself, my name is Ricardo Mel. I'm the CTO at DRI. It's a Portuguese company. Um, that do software here on this the, the, on Portugal. Uh, about myself, I'm most of the time I work with PHP, MySQL, Linux, and a lot of other uh, open source tools and, and projects. Uh, I've got some certifications, uh, Zen certification, the Red Hat, the Alpha guy. It's a Linux professional institute, IT, etc. And I'm trying to build and sometimes breaking things more or less like 10 years right now. Okay? You're right, it's a Portuguese company, has 14 years this year, and we are very oriented to open source software and open source uh, solutions. Okay? So uh, we work with the same solutions that I referred to right now. Um, about the talk, I'll, I'll talk a, a little <coughs> bit about OWASP and uh, and then we go through OWASP top 10, uh, bullet by bullet, and then some resources and uh, out where to go next and have uh, further information, and then we go to the conclusions and try to to pass on the, the for me the principal uh, points about. Uh, approaching this, this issue or this, this team about security. Okay. Related to OWASP, OWASP is a, it's called an Open Web Application Security Project. It's a non-profit uh, uh, association. It's a group of, uh, in fact, it has a very active community. Okay. Unfortunately, most of the community is bankers or defenders. Breakers normally are the it's name that is called to, to to the person that normally conducts pen testing and other kind of activities like security auditors. Uh, defenders normally are more people like sysadmins and uh, people that does web application firewall and things like that. And then there are the developers. Okay? Unfortunately. Developers and security people don't mix. Okay? It's unfortunate because they should mix and that would make uh, all the process uh, easier to fool and it's more simple to fix things if both teams agree on the common goal. Okay? There are a lot of projects. OWASP Top 10 is one of them, but there are a lot of other great projects Namely, they have a lot of documentation about what you can do to uh, improve your application security, how to test your application <coughs> security. The developer's guide is outdated, but it's currently ongoing an effort to update the developer's guide. And I, I think it would be great if we can have the next release by the next year. Okay. About the top 10. In fact, the OWASP top 10 is the name that normally uh, people see about this list of, of security risks. It's the name of the top 10 most critical web application risks. Okay? It's not vulnerabilities. There are risks. Okay? The, the, there is a slight difference. It's a, a, a soon to be problem. Okay? It's something that can be there if you could pass several years without having a problem, but there is an issue that should be addressed. Okay? The focus of this list is more awareness. Okay? To warn people, both to stakeholders, developers, whatever, that the security risks are present and should be addressed okay? in, a, a, in a proper way. Okay? If you want, you can go to that page or search for OWASP Top 10 on Google and you'll have the, more or less the same, the same documentation. Okay? They have both the online version on the, the wiki and the PDF version that you can download 
for a reason on your tablet or wherever you know, when you wait in something in some place. Okay. And the question is, what is the risk? Okay, from the OWASP top 10 point of view. The question is, the risk is related to a lot of things. One of them is the threat agent, okay? meaning uh, who can attack or affect the application, who are the users or the systems or in a, a more broad way the agents that can target the application. Then what are the attack vectors? Okay? Attack vectors is a, a point of interest on the application that can be used by someone to exploit the application. Then there are the weakness, because you can have a weakness on your code and no one can target it because there is no attack vector to reach that weakness. And that is not a, shouldn't exist, but in fact it's not a security risk because the likelihood of being uh, reached and exploited is very low. Okay? And then what are your security controls? And afterwards, the question is, what is the technical impact of someone using an app, uh, one attack vector, uh, use a, a security weakness on your application? That's the technical impact. Okay? Can be from can be something ranging from a website deface, where your website don't look like uh, what you plan to look, and you, you have something like this on on the latest on the last elections on France that the, uh, one of the candidates was shown on its own website doing some sexual explicit things okay? and in fact all the, the information wasn't on the website it was a security flow uh, called cross-site scripting okay? and then the impact for the business okay? you can have uh, it's your business, so uh, the only person that could uh, rank a given um, attack on all, how much it affects my business, because probably some person or some business aren't that much interested if the website looks great or not, but if you go to uh, a banking or some other uh, big companies, if the website is attacked, then you have a problem with credibility of the informatic systems and then that would be bad for the company. Okay? And at the end, what we do is, or what OWASP has done, is you've got, related to the trade agent, you need to know for your application, you need to find out for your application what are the trade agents, what are the end points of the actors, that can interact with your application, then what are the business impacts of every fault that, that you find on the, on your application. But given that the top 10 is like an aggregated view of security weakness found on the application, uh, the scoring methodology was that you've got attack vectors, weakness prevalence, weakness detectability, and technical impact. For each of these was ranked like it's very easy to attack the application, yes, then this is a problem or a bigger <coughs> problem. It's very widespread, yeah, and then uh, so you've got the low cost of finding another website with the same vulnerability, okay? It's easy to scan the website and detect that it's vulnerable, yes, so if all these match and also the, the, the information that we can retrieve or the, the way we affect the system, it's, it's severe, then you've got the huge or the most critical security fall on your application. Okay? And given all this, this scoring, the, the final version was like, was this. It's ordered by uh, mostly by the uh, likelihood of having uh, these holes on your application and on the other side the business uh, value or the perce perception of the business value of exploiting one of these holes. Okay?
and starting with injection, and it's not only SQL injection. Normally, people want to talk about SQL injection, but there is a lot of uh, other ways of injecting things in, in the application. Then, broken authentication and session management. We will we will go through all these points, so I'll be brief. Um, it's related to the way. We authenticate the user and assure that the user is who seems to be and uh, how we handle all this process. Then cross-site scripting, it's mostly related to someone be able to inject code on our page. Okay. Uh, in secure direct object reference, uh, the simple uh, example is uh, changing one parameter on, the, on your browser and get access to other guy account on a bank or whatever, okay? A secure, uh, security means configuration, it's related not really only with the application but all the system related to the application. Your server uh, or your operating system, your uh, application servers, the other applications that are installed on the server, all this counts through uh, security means configuration. Then sensitive data exposure, we had uh, quite a few cases of, of this that someone leaked the entire uh, user password database and also they, are, they were encrypted on a, a low encryption uh, or on a easily reversible or findable way uh, and you have like huge database leak uh, of passwords. Missing function level access control, something like I've I'm able to do or uh, read some object, but because I change some parameters on my request, I'll be able to write or whatever on the object. It's very much like a secure direct object reference, but for functions instead of content. Okay. Uh, cross site um, cross site request forgery. Uh, this is mainly. If I can trick you to go or, uh, on a vulnerable website, I have applications that I can I, I'm be able to trick users to uh, do that uh, action without user knowledge. And using content, we, we know vulnerabilities. This is simple because if, you, if the application is secure on day zero, after two months, probably some of the comments you've used it's, it's, uh, have been uh, compromised in some way. So you have to catch up with that and be in your production applications even if you don't do extra code or new code for that application. And I'm hoping that to redirect in forwards. It looks simple and, and, and quite harmless, but in fact you can, in some applications and in some conditions, uh, do a, a privilege uh, escalation by using forwards. Regarding injection, normally injection uh, occurs when you send data to the application and the data lands on your inter interpreter, uh, being that uh, SQL interpreter and LDAP are your own operating systems without being validated or filtered. Okay? And the, the key bullets about this is never, but never trust any input. It's not only user input because the other system could be compromised and you've got the, the, the data through a web server or whatever, but it's compromised and never works. Okay? A simple injection about this will be a simple script where you send a, a parameter called start record, uh, record and this will do like a simple pagination on your results. Okay? And uh, if, you, uh, if you change this parameter, you should have the next page and the other and the other. Okay? Someone who treat this application sending something like this, some value, <coughs> because this is on the end of the limit, okay? I can send limit one um, semicolon and then the SQL uh, codes that I want, okay? 
and this is the classic that I want to drop all table, but this could be like create a X and user for the application, and then I go to the application and I have admin access to the application and can do and I can do whatever I want. Okay? And these two slashes at the end well is a MySQL or SQL command, so everything that is after this is ignored, namely this this uh, this part of the code, okay? And this is widespread. <coughs> you go to GitHub and you search like uh, uh, MySQL uh, and then uh, get or request or post. You've got a lot of softwares, probably testing software, some some production software, softwares that use or direct use uh, inputs from uh, the user directly on the queries. The question is normally uh, the, the answer or if someone sees uh, this, this sample code will tell you please use PDO for uh, assessing your database but in fact it's vulnerable whatever tool you use because if you don't use it correctly you end up with a vulnerable code and correctly will be parameterized queries, okay? You say, okay, I'll put a value here, and then what's the value that I want to put there, okay? Even if as some weird uh, characters, the, um, the parameters, parameterized query will escape the characters and will be warmless for the database. But since that is the, the, the classic example, I've uh, got another example of injection. This time, I'll, I'll inject through a common line, okay? I've got a simple script that returns the file type of some type, some file, okay? And uh, imagine the web interface with all the files, and I, know, I want to know the file type of that file, okay? And this, this is... Don't look bad. If you try to replace this parameter with something like this, you can, for instance, um, delete the entire server if you got enough privilege. At least, normally, you can delete the entire application. Okay. It's not funny. And other use for this is, for instance, you can download the script to the server and start the script normally connecting it to uh, uh, IRC network and you've got like a box and then you can com command the server from there. It's nice. Okay. And this can, avoid, can be avoided using appropriate methods for each uh, interface. If it's a SQL interface probably parameterized queries. If, it's, uh, if you really must execute something on the file system at least use escape, escape shell arcs or uh, escape shell command. Okay. The second item uh, is related to user authentication. The, the, the two uh, principal uh, problems normally is session hijacking and fixation. Okay. What is this? It's, if I can send a, a, a link to someone with a session ID art coded and that someone logs in on the website, I can enter on the same website using their account without knowing their user or password. Okay? And normally I'll send the, this by email or whatever. Go look here, uh, it's a funny thing or something like that. Okay? The other problem some, uh, sometimes uh, is related to broken authentication. Both uh, the authentication itself, or sometimes, for instance, on the, the interface where you can change the password, the web page sends the username back to the server. And if I change the username, I can change the password of another user. So, these kind of things normally land on this topic about uh, broken authentication and session management. Okay? If, in terms of code, it could be something like this. I've got uh, a link that I've sent to someone. Before I've, I've done session start, I'm inside the PHP script. 
and then I check the credentials, everything is okay, and I put the user details on my session so I can know that the user is logged in and I can handle the user in some way. Okay. The problem is if someone send me the, the session ID on the link uh, and depending on the server configuration, I can the, the, the guy that sent me that link knows my session ID <coughs> and my session ID is the token that identifies me with the server. So the other guy goes to the same link after I, I've done the login and it's the same uh, and the server don't know who is who. So I, I can enter with that user authentication. Okay? The part, the, the important step on this process is this. When you are not authenticated, you are going to be authenticated. You should regenerate your session ID to an unknown session ID. So the other user will still have an, uh, an authenticated session. The next one is cross-site scripting. Okay, cross-site scripting and is something like I can inject normally JavaScript on your browser. Okay, if I be able to inject JavaScript on your browser, it's the same thing of being seated on your browser, and I can do almost everything. There is there are entire frameworks to control the other user's uh, PC by using by uh, having some uh, cross-site scripting on the injecting on the user page okay there are three uh, different types stored the storage is someone has been able to store uh, the cross-site scripting uh, on the website the username of the user or something like that every time someone goes to that page we'll see this this cross-site scripting being executed the reflected, normally, I'll, I'll have a, an example for reflected. The, the normal uh, example is like a search string that it's printed back on the, the web page after searching. Okay? And doom based. Doom based are a little bit more tricky. Uh, <coughs> the first two are printed on the HTML that it sent it back from, from the server. The last one is triggered on the server, so the HTML has no problem, but because not normally because he uses a cookie or a parameter from the, command, the, the, the link, you'll be able to trick the script to execute your own code. Okay? An example of a reflected um, uh, cross-site scripting should be something like this. You've got the search page where you can have a search term and you do some operation to get the all matches and you print back like results for this search and then you render all your results table. Okay? The question is since you are not escaping this, okay, uh, wherever I, I send here, namely I can send some JavaScript will be uh, embedded on the, the web page in this case, when the page loads, the user will be redirected to another um, site. In this case, you'll send my cookies, and with my cookies, there is my session ID, and with my session ID, the other user can enter this website without knowing me or my password. Okay? Normally, the way to, to the countermeasure for cross-site scripting is you have to escape all outputs. But it's not that easy because different places on your application have different ways to be escape the output. So if you are escaping the output for HTML, JavaScript or other way, uh, you have different uh, ways to escape. And if you escape all output in the same way, probably you are going to broke to break your application or someone can bypass that by using the correct or target uh, attacks for bypassing that kind of uh, output uh, filtering. Okay? The secure direct object uh, reference has to be with uh, someone uh, reach the web page 
you've got like a parameter and you can change the parameter and assess other values inside the object. The object, the object can be something like a database. So if you send the account ID on your request and someone uh, comes and change the account ID, should these return values about the other account? Probably not. Okay? But because there is no validation, if the user is being able or should be able to see that account, you'll see the, the information about the other account. So what you need is to um, check every time if the user can see of the user that is assessing the values can see the values. So you have to have some kind of access control in place. Uh, OPS all code is dummy. Okay? It's done for trying to evidence the, the issues. So no frameworks or whatever have been armored during the process. Okay? Security misconfiguration. Uh, apart from the application itself, you've got uh, a lot of uh, a lot of incidents. What what and what what has been compromised wasn't the application, but a side system. Uh, for instance, you've got the MySQL server directly facing the internet with a weak password. Okay? Uh, <coughs> That was the way that Emma has been compromised. So uh, it, it has nothing to do with the web application, but probably you've got like which my my uh, my admin uh, installed uh, on another folder, and which my admin is known by its security faults, and other softwares have its own security faults. Uh, one time. Uh, uh, as soon as the attacker enters the machine or has access to the machine, he can change things on other applications and mainly on your application. Okay. Watch out for outdated software and default accounts. Okay. This is two of the most uh, use and uh, more frequent problems. Okay. The other thing has to do with sensitive data exposure. Imagine that you manage a huge website and someone gets a dump of your uh, users or database of your users with credit cards, passwords and everything else. It's not nice. So you have to be uh, careful about the way you handle your information or the information about your users. Okay? Namely, have uh, proper policies in place, namely uh, cryptography, uh, don't use weak cryptography. There is an uh, excellent art art um, right, yeah. article uh, from the security team of Mozilla about uh, the way you can store passwords to be forward compatible. So you have uh, like a rollout policy each time you need to, to to change your password policy, and even then have the security po uh, password policy for password or credit card or whatever policy for your users. Okay, be aware that when you do a backup your, of your servers, it should be uh, encrypted also, because the sysadmin do have access to your application and your database. Okay, that's not. The same way you, you can assess uh, things on your objects that you shouldn't, there is a way to, uh, in some uh, conditions, you can assess functions that weren't meant to be accessible. So uh, the question is, you are a normal user and you find out the, the link for the administ administration panel and you change the, the link on your browser and you land on the administration panel, being able to do all the administration tasks. This is one of the, 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 the ways that th things can be, be done. The other way and the example is something like you've got um, an action, a script, where the user normally, because of you don't draw <coughs> on the user interface the other actions, the user only knows that can uh, read its own account, okay? But because you've got no protection, if the user finds out that 
there is another action like delete you could delete uh, itself for instance or because you are also passing the user you can delete any user on the system right so it's not one fault these are two security distinct security faults so every time you've got an action you should uh, check if the user that is currently doing that action has enough privilege to do the, uh, the action so you for this example you should have something like you can read or you can uh, delete the user okay. cross site request for journey typically you will have uh, some page over the internet with some image or something like an image or a script stack that will uh, hold an, an external address normally to a, a vulnerable application okay manage manage that uh, the, the interface for transferring fund, transfer funds from from your account is uh, just uh, you can transfer found funds by uh, putting everything on your um, on your link. Okay, if the attacker knows that, you can put like his own uh, account, and then the amount that he wants to transfer and trick you to go to one other page on another do domain with uh, uh, an image that points back to that page. That way, that way someone could, could uh, uh, if the vulnerable application is like this, uh, where you've got the login user and then uh, someone can delete or you check if the login user can delete this user and delete the, the user. So from the, the, the access control, the, the, the controls that you need to, to make sure that only this user can delete this user, it's everything okay, but because you don't have any extra check, I can do that by simply put the parameter here, okay? On a, an attacker website, I can write this address, putting the ID of the user I want to delete here, and when my user sees this page, we'll load this uh, website. And for the website or for the application, it's a user that is trying to do it the, the, the other guy. So there is no difference between these and the user go there and press the button. So you need, normally the, defend, the defense is inserting an, a random token on your forms and checking if the, the token is valid or not for this user. Normally, when user log in, you, you generate a random token based on whatever, okay? It's your business to, to, to know. And then, for each request, we'll check if the token is valid or not. Uh, the other one is using contents with no vulnerabilities. This is easy. If you are, uh, if you are using vulnerable libraries, probably will, uh, someone will spot a problem, not on your code, but what you hope the library will do inside your code, and uh, use that to exploit your application. Okay? And the other one is it's more, the last one is it's more uh, difficult to explain. There are two questions here. Uh, or the, the question is, someone can use your website to redirect users to another website. So manage, uh, the, is, if someone sends you the link of your uh, own company website, probably you'll see the start of the, the address, okay, it's my company website, you click, go to the company website and then you are redirected to another place. For instance, a phishing site looking just like your company website, but uh, it's a different website, okay? And these kind of things can be done when you have got uh, somewhere on your application something that allows you to say, okay, I want to be redirected to another address, okay? And the, the, the more unconventional way to use this is with forwarders. And with forwarders, 
what you have is some frameworks allow you inside the controllers to call other methods. Okay? And for instance, on this sample, I've got I've invented a simple framework that uh, will check the access control when you enter on the controller and then you go to the index action, okay? And you do something and to, to, to avoid an extra HTTP call, if I've got a, a parameter call, called callback, okay, I'll forward the request to another function, probably, uh, for instance, you've got to the index and then I have go to another function to render uh, something, okay? And I can trick this code to call another, other, uh, uh, another function that probably normally won't be called because the check access won't allow me because I've got the action and my uh, my arguments probably the user but since I'm, I'm using four orders inside the application I don't pass again on the access control so I can enter by one function and then execute another function which I have got no access and no, no other way to execute okay? and normally <coughs> I'll need to, in each uh, place where I do a forward, making sure that the, in this case, the pre function that does the access control, it's called. Okay. Normally, it, this is done inside the frameworks. Okay. I have to make up my own framework for this sample to make sense. Okay? And last, some uh, some information. Okay, uh, I'll post the, uh, the, the presentation online so you can go there or you can search on the internet by this title and you will be there. There are plenty, plenty of, inf of information on the OWASP website. There is uh, all OWASP sheets, sheets, sheets that uh, you've got for uh, uh, SQL injection, common injection and everything else. Okay. And you've got one uh, beautiful tool called Zen Detect Proxy. There are another tool, other tools on the market, but this is right, it's open source, it's free, and allows you to see every request that is being made. You set up the tool as a proxy for your browser, and you see all requests being made, and uh, it's very easy to debug, include, including if you are uh, doing S, uh, HTTPS request because it, it has uh, proxy that allows you to generate certificates on the fly and uh, not only uh, it's a uh, good helping for debugging applications that all also allows you to automate some things like fuzzy on parameters that allows you to check the application okay? And there is a lot of books, uh, in, um, if you like wikis, all the information is on the wiki. If you like a uh, 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 well-printed book, you've got a lot of books of, of, uh, made by OWASP that you can read, namely the testing guide, the development guide, the uh, software assurance model that is heavy to read, but it's nice and other books about uh, securing Rails, securing PHP, whatever, okay? There are a lot of books and they are nice. And my conclusions in the, the points that I want to share with you is uh, keep the applications use is not one shot and it's everything okay and go to the next. It's something that is it needs to be done over the time, okay? And avoiding the top 10 risks don't make your application secure, but it's a huge step forward because if you miss, if you don't have that top 10 security faults, we make the job to uh, wherever attacker you've got on your website a lot harder, okay? And don't trust any inputs from any system, and mainly you have to escape your output because if someone owns your user's web page, the web page the user is seeing, you can do everything with the page, including changing all your website, or at least it looks like it's been changed. Okay? I hope you like, and the English wasn't too
to them. So sometimes it was difficult. <laughs> and see you. Questions? Thank you.